Audio signal connections in Max for Live are a little bit different than the data connections we've been using with Max objects so far. A data connection with Max objects consists of a message that is sent when you want it to be sent. So if I make a message box and I give it an argument of 125, now when I send it to the set input of another message box, you'll see that this message only comes through when I click down on it and I trigger this data connection. Now, the way that audio signals work is audio is actually a constant stream of audio rate data that is actually coming at 44,000 samples per second. Now these 44,000 samples per second are really amplitude measurements. And by playing these back at such a fast rate, these amplitude measurements are actually interpreted as audio. So, to stop a connection of audio, we can't just send a message saying stop. What we need to do is actually cut the audio connection somehow. Now there are certain objects to do this, such as gates, which will open and close an audio connection. Or you can use a simple volume slider, such as the gain tilde object that we used earlier. And what this can do is it can go from an audio rate on by gain being up or an audio off by keeping the gain down. Now that's a very basic example of killing an audio connection. So let's look at a couple cool little synthesis techniques that kind of expand upon what we played with earlier. Now, the first thing we'll do is add a cycle tilde object. And to control that cycle tilde object, let's add a live dot dial. And we wanna make sure this live dial is in the audio range that we want. So let's look at and set its frequency range from one to 2000. So we will connect the output of live dial to the frequency input of our cycle tilde object. And now let's make an exact copy of this by hovering over the two objects, holding down the option key and clicking and dragging. And what this does is it makes a duplicate copy of whatever we've had selected, which is a very handy feature in building max patches. So the next thing we're gonna do is make a multiply tilde object by using the asterisk on the eight number key on your keyboard. And make sure we select the tilde one, not the regular multiply object. Now what this does is it actually multiplies two signals together or can multiply one signal by whatever constant number you feed it in its right input. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and first connect our first cycle tilde object, which is a signal output to the input of our multiplier tilde object. And let's connect the output of the multiplier to the input of the gain slider and the output of the gain slider to the right and the left input of our plug out object. And again, our plug out object is the audio output that's gonna be coming out of our Max for Live patch and into our Ableton Live session. So if we lock our patch now and slowly turn up our gain slider, we notice that we don't actually hear any audio coming in. Now, that's because our multiplier object here is working very similarly to our gain slider object. But since we haven't given the multiplier any messages, we haven't told it what level we want it to multiply at. So it's right now assuming that we're multiplying at zero. So what we can do is add a float box by using the F key. And we wanna use a float box, and I'll tell you why. Because if we multiply a signal by one, that is basically a normal signal level, which in this case, the signal level that's coming out of the cycle object Will be multiplied and come through will be multiplied by one and come through the multiplier object at its normal rate such as us just connecting the cycle object to the gain slider so if we connect our float box to the input of the multiplier and we tell it one you can just type one and enter now when we move our frequency up and slowly bring our gain up we will hear this frequency come through so the reason we wanted to use a float box is because we sometimes want to bring this signal below one, and since integers are only whole numbers, we can actually, by using this float box, click on the right side and drag down, and you'll hear it actually brings our signal down. 
because it's multiplying it by this amount. So, in this case, you should be a little careful because you can actually go over one and overdrive your signal. So if I go up a little bit, you'll hear it start to clip and it makes that funny noise in Ableton. So, this is kind of to demonstrate what a multiplier tilde object does. Now, let's take this to one step cooler which basically we're going to achieve a method of synthesis that's called amplitude modulation. And we're going to do this by instead of feeding the multiplier a constant 1, we're going to actually send it another sine wave signal. And to show you what this is going to do, first once we connect this, let's cl click on our live dial and type in 1. Now what you hear is this sine wave that's actually only at 1 hertz coming out, which means 1 cycle per second, that's modulating this multiplier, and it's raising our signal up and down once per second. So that's how you hear it going at a constant 1 second rate. So this is essentially doing the same thing as I would be doing if I was to drag up and down 1 time per second on our gain slider object. Now. What's cool about this sort of method of synthesis, which is called amplitude modulation, is we can get some really cool sounds when we actually speed this up. So if it's at 2, if we type in 2, you'll hear it go twice as fast. If we go 4, twice as fast again. So this is kind of like a tremolo effect that's moving really fast right now. But if we take this and we move it to a faster frequency, we get to hear some really interesting sounds. Now what these are, is these are actually audio sidebands and harmonics that are being generated by modulating this original frequency so fast up and down. So since our live dial is zero or one to 2000, we kind of hear this grainy effect when we move our slider. So what we can actually do is we can hold down the command key on our keyboard and when we click and drag, it lets us adjust in a much smoother range and it gives us more precise control which is obviously a lot better sounding when we're playing with this dial. Now this works not only for building max patches but also using in an Ableton set. So if you wanted that precise control when you have a device, you can hold down the command key and do this again. So by keeping this up and doing the same with the other, you can hear all these very interesting side bands that are coming through. So this is a very basic demonstration of what's called amplitude modulation synthesis.